Now there are many times where using Elemental Pro is just overkill and simply not needed, but you still want to benefit from custom headers and footers. In a situation like that, what exactly are our options? Well, how about a free plugin that does almost everything the header and footer templates of Elemental Pro do with some extra cool and unique features? Oh, and did I mention it's absolutely free? Now, not to mention it's developed by those talented peeps over at Brainstorm Force, the talent behind the incredibly popular Astro theme. Now, I regularly release content on awesome free plugins for WordPress and Elemental. If you like that type of content and you find this video useful, please consider clicking on that subscribe button to be notified when I release new content. Okay, with that out of the way, let's just jump over now into Elemental and WordPress and take a look at how we can use this plugin. So this is the plugin we're going to be taking a look at. It's the Elemental Header, Footer and Blocks template. It allows us to insert headers and footers and block templates and content into our designs without the need for Elemental Pro. So one of the limitations with Elemental Free is you don't have the ability to globally set or choose where you want to set various different headers and footers throughout your entire site. This is a pro only feature. So the Elementor header, footer and blocks template opens up all those options to us. So let's take a look at how we can implement this into our designs. Once you've gone ahead and installed the plugin, you're going to have a new entry inside the appearance menu, and that is the header, footer and blocks. Let's open that option up and this is where we can start to get creative. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our first element. So we're going to click add new and from there we're going to give this a title and we're just going to call this default header. Now you can call this whatever you want but give it a name that makes sense to whatever you're doing. Okay so underneath that we've got what looks like a very simple option which is the type of template. We click and open that up and we can choose between headers, before footer, footer and custom block. So header, as its name would suggest, is predominantly where you're going to put things like your navigation and your logo. Before the footer could be something like a call to action, like a please subscribe to our newsletter kind of thing. Your footer obviously is a footer and the custom block is where you can take custom designs and insert those into your pages. We're going to start off with the header option so we can get a feel for how this plugin works. Open that up. We now have a range of additional options. Display on. These are the conditions we want to use to specify where this template is going to be used. And as you can see, there are a lot of options. If you're coming over from an Elemental Pro sort of use case, you're going to find a lot of these are going to be very self-explanatory. You know, you've got your basics, so you've got your entire website, all single templates, all archive templates, and so on. You've also then got your special pages, so you may want to have different navigation for your 404 page, your front page, you know, right the way through to the templates or specific target items. So you can target specific posts, taxonomies, and so on. There's a whole range of really useful features inside here for how to display this information. We're going to keep this really straightforward and say we want to use this for the entire website. But you can also add additional rules in there. You can add exclusion rules. You can get really creative with this to get exactly what you want. If you want to add a second rule, you can do just that and all those same options are inside there. We'll click to get rid of that and we can say add an exclusion rule and this is basically when to not display them. So you can say you want to display on the entire website except for specific sections, maybe the 404 page for example. So by using these display on and do not display on options and rules, you can get exactly what you want and display any kind of header, footer, you know, all those different kinds of template options wherever you want throughout your entire site. You also have user roles available to you, and this isn't something that's available inside Elemental Pro. This is where we can combine those display on with things like user rules. So you can see we've got some basic, which is everybody can see it. We may have some other basic options, like if you're logged in or logged out. So you may, like I've seen before, have different menus, different headers, different footers for people that are logged in to those that are logged out. You know, those kinds of things. You may also have different ones based upon the user roles that are available throughout your site. You can see we've got all the normal WordPress like administrator, editor, and so on. We also have customer and shop manager from where we have or have had WooCommerce installed. So as you add new roles in there, these will become available inside this plugin. We're going to say we stick to basic and everybody is going to see this. And again, we can add this user uh, role if we want to and add more. So enable layout for Elementor custom canvas. Now, if you're not sure what the custom canvas is, it's basically taking 
whatever template or theme you've got installed as part of WordPress and ignoring it completely to give you a completely blank template to work with Elementor. So it gets rid of headers and footers that would normally be part of your theme. But with this, you can enable these elements to be included inside the Elementor Canvas template. Again, it's one of those things, if this is something you think is going to be useful for the project you're working on, you can enable it. For many use cases, if not most use cases, it's probably going to be a case of you will leave it at the default, which is disabled. Now we've set things up, let's just save this draft and then open edit with Elementor, and then we can start taking a look at actually building our default header and what tools we have available. Edit with Elementor, let's open that up. And once we've done that, we get the normal Elementor editor. Now on top of the editor, we also get some extra widgets, which is really cool to see because it opens up more options that you'd normally have to have Elementor Pro to use. So if we just close these up, we'll see we have a new section called header, footer, and blocks. And inside there, we have currently eight different widgets we can use. So most of these are gonna be super useful for us. So let's start off by doing what we'd normally do to create a very simplistic header. We're gonna add in a new two column section. So we're gonna set it up like this. So the left-hand side is where our logo is gonna sit. The right-hand side is where we're gonna place our navigation. Now this isn't about how you style things and those kinds of things. This is more a case of just showing you how this tool works because well, once you start to get creative with a design, you're gonna go off and do whatever you want when it comes to styling things out anyway. Okay, with that being said, let's just make this section a little smaller. Let's just set this to be 20% and the rest of it then will be 80%. So now we've set up the basic structure, we can go ahead and start inserting the relevant elements. So let's come back to our widgets. And what we're gonna do is we're first of all gonna grab the navigation menu option and drag that over to the right hand side. Next up, we're gonna grab the site logo and drag that up to the left-hand side. Now your site logo has been set as part of the theme. In this example, we're using the free Astra theme, but you could, if you wanted to set up a custom image inside here, you don't have to use the site logo. You can set up whatever you want. And as you can see, we can use the site logo option. We also have the option to set a custom image directly inside here. So if we wanted to, we could enable that and then choose a custom image. We're gonna let this use the one I've set up as part of my theme. Image size, I'm gonna set this to be full because we've got this set up for the right size for this design. And you can see we can set a caption or we can set a link. By default, you'd probably wanna set a link to be the homepage. We'll set this to default because that's pretty much gonna to go to the homepage for us. Okay, so there's the two widgets we needed inserted into our design layout. Now we can start configuring these different widgets. The logo, I'm perfectly happy with that for now. We'll click on the navigation on the right hand side and this is where we can start to get a little creative with how things work and there's a lot of really nice options inside here first up we've got what menu do we want to use so if you have multiple menus set up you can choose which one is right for this particular section we then have the last menu item so you can see i've set an item on there called book now i want to set that to be a button so i can do last menu item i can select and i can just turn that into a button now that we set that to a button, we can now go ahead and style or configure everything to do with the menu itself. So we can click on layout, and this is where we can control both the desktop and the mobile responsive views. So you can see currently we have the layout set to horizontal, but we can do vertical, expanded, and flyout. So we have a range of really cool options inside there. We'll leave this to horizontal for right now. Alignment, we can set to left, center, right, or justify. So let's just pop that over to the right-hand side so it sits with our design a little nicer. Submenu items, you can see under services, we have skiing and snowboarding. We can choose that submenu icon from there. We can choose between arrows, plus sign, and classic. So if we choose classic, for example, that will update to whatever the classic option is, or we can change this to a plus sign. You can see we now got a plus sign. Submenu animation, we can choose to have the default, which is kind of just fades in, or we can have the slide up, and you can see that slides up when we mouse over. So you can fine tune and configure this to get what you want, and then we've got the options for responsive. So let's just switch this over now to one of our responsive modes, like tablet, for example. And you can see now we've got the hamburger menu inside there. Now we can choose how this all works. We can set our breakpoints between mobile, tablet, and none. So currently we're using the default options as part of Elementor. Unfortunately, we don't have any real control over that other than setting the basic values. The alignment, well, let's just pop that over to the right-hand side for the tablet view. Then we've got full width. Enable this option to stretch the submenu to full width. Up to you if you want to use that. So we can enable or disable that. 
Then you've got your menu icons. You've got your hamburger menu for when you want a mouse over and click to open it up. And then you've got your close icon. So if we click on there, you can see that opens up and that changes to the little X if you can see it. So now we can come over, close that down. But if you wanted to, you could change this from anything inside the standard icon library that's part of Elementor, or you could upload your own including SVG images if you enable that option. So you have a range of options inside there to customize and configure this a little bit more to the style that you may want to work with. Okay, so let's come back out of our responsive mode and go back to desktop. If we come over to the style option, inside there we now have all the options to configure the styling for this. Now I'm not gonna go through all the options on here. They're pretty self-explanatory. You can adjust the padding, vertical and horizontal, row spacing and so on. So if you wanna change the spacing in between each of your links, you can do just that. And you can also control this based upon the device that you're viewing it on. So that's nice to see you have those options inside there. You can also adjust the typography, the options for the normal hover and active states. So you can color code everything to fit exactly as you want. You also have the options then to control the drop down menu, how that looks, the colors, and again, for the normal hover and active options. If we close that down, you've got your menu trigger and close icons, which is what we just saw on the mobile responsive view. So you can again, control the colors, the hover states and so on inside there. And finally, we've got the button option, which for some reason has now disappeared, but the option is still there. Okay, so that's the styling options. That's the basics of how you can use that. Let's take a quick look at this now, what it looks like on the page. So let's just publish this. And unlike what you have inside Elemental Pro where you choose the conditions, we've kind of already set that when we chose to create this using this particular plugin. So now we've got it, let's take a look at what this looks like on the actual front end of our test website. And there we go, there's our basic menu setup on our test site. There's a few things we could do to this to make it look a lot nicer, but ultimately you can see that it is working exactly the way we'd expect it to. So that's how we can create a basic simple navigation element. Working with a footer and so on is all pretty much exactly the same. So now we've seen the basics, let's go back and just test out some of these other options that we have. Let's go back into Elementor, back into our navigation setup. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just grab this navigation on the right hand side and from there we're going to come to our layout option and we're going to try another option let's change it from horizontal to for example fly out click on there we now get the little hamburger menu because we need to use this as the trigger to open up our fly out menu we're going to pop this over to the right hand side and we're just going to update this so we'll update that on there and we'll jump back over to our test page we'll refresh this and we now have our navigation element in the top right hand corner. Click on there and you can see that now pops out our navigation on the left hand side. Again, we'd wanna style this a little nicer, but you can see how super easy it is to do just that. We can close that back down and there we go. Come back in and you can see we've got a peer effect and we can say we want this to push, for example, and set it to the right hand side. And we'll just update this, come back over and refresh our page and let's test that out again. And you see that now pushes things over and gives us our navigation on the right hand side. We close it down, closes it up. So you've got a lot of options inside there to control how you want your navigation to work, which is pretty cool to see. So now we've seen the headers, let's take a look at some of the other options. Now I'm not gonna go over the footer side of things, click at the top of this video, it's pretty much exactly the same as what you've seen with the header section, just different content's gonna go in there. So the routine would be exactly the same. However, let's take a look at some of the other things we can do. Let's add a new template in. So let's just create something new. So we're gonna call this call to action. And this is gonna be available just to people that are not currently logged in. So therefore they are potentially people that may be interested in what we do, but they haven't taken that step yet to subscribe or create an account or whatever it is your account, your site is actually going to do. So what we're gonna do is type of template. We're gonna click and we're gonna just choose the option for before footer. Now this is gonna create a design that's gonna sit above the footer. Whether you've created a custom footer using this or your theme may have a custom footer, it will still sit above it as long as it's being called up and referenced as a footer. Okay, well that being said, display on. I'm gonna click on there and we're gonna say entire website. But we're gonna set up a user role rule to put on this as well. So we're gonna just choose the option to say logged out. So this is gonna display it in the entire site only for logged out users. Anybody that's logged in will not see this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit publish on there. So we've created the rules, the conditions for our call to action. Let's hit edit with Elementor. 
open that up and let's just create something incredibly simple just so you can see how this works so i'm only going to put in a simple block we're going to just drop in a heading inside there we'll just say this is call to action so we'll just say call to action there we go we can't get much better call to action than the words call to action let's just simply then set the background of this section and we're going to set that to a nice bright red so no one can really miss out on what's being done there and we'll just pop in a little bit of padding around there and set our call to action text to stand out by being white Okay, so really simple, but you'd probably put something a lot more creative and interesting in, but the principle is the more important thing. So we've updated that. Now let's just come back over to our test site. We'll refresh this, and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom above our footer. And as you can see, there is nothing there, and that's because we are currently logged in. So if we open up an incognito window, so I'm just gonna open up a new incognito window. I'm gonna drop in the URL for this site. Drop that inside there. So now we're no longer logged in. So we scroll down. And as you can see, there's our call to action. So anybody that's not logged in will see our call to action above our footer throughout the entire site. Anybody that is logged in won't see it. So that's how easy it is to use this above the footer option. Let's finally take a look at this sort of content where we can drop it in wherever we want. We're back in the custom header footer and block section. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom block. So I've set my custom block. We're gonna come down and choose custom block as the option. And you can see all that does is it give us a very simple short code. So we could then use this wherever we wanted throughout our entire site. So just by copying that little bit of code, we can then take whatever we put inside this design and drop it in anywhere in our site, just using the short code option. So let's just save this as a draft for now. Edit that with Elementor. And we're just gonna create just a simple block that we just did now so we're going to just grab this block and we're going to come to content widgets and we're going to say we're going to drop in an image we'll choose an image from a media library doesn't really matter what we're going to choose i'll take this one and we'll just put a title above it just saying this is custom block there we go we'll center that and we'll set that to h4 okay there's our custom blocks we'll publish that so now that can be used any way we want on our entire site so we're just going to close this down exit to our dashboard and if you want to you could use this inside your custom templates as well however you wanted to use it so now all you need to do is go to any of your pages your templates and so on we we'll go to all pages and we'll just go to our home page for example and we'll just edit that with elemental and once we've done that, we can then just drop this wherever we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a place for this. We'll say this little area by here, which has nothing currently in it. We're going to grab our short code widget, drop that inside there, and drop our short code in. And you can see that now drops our custom block inside there. We'll update that. And now that's been added into our design. So if we come back over to our test page and refresh, we'll find a scroll up, and there's our custom block section. Now, for me, this is probably the least useful out of all the options that we have as part of this plugin. But it does mean that you don't rely upon Elementor Pro to do a lot of the things that you may want to do with headers and footers. Pretty cool. Now, there really is no limit to the types of headers and footers you can create with Elementor for zero cost. If you found this video useful and you want more great content like this, check out the video that's on screen right now and drop a comment on how you normally create your custom headers and footers with Elementor in the comment section below. As always, all of the applicable links are included in the description. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tats, and until next time, take care.